This is a video for our supporters to explain to you the deception that took place in the making of the Netflix Tiger King and to thank you so much for so many expressions of support that we have received from you. Most of you know me, but for those who don't, I'm Howard Baskin, Carol Baskin's husband. And this video may be a little halting because I'm not used to making them. For anyone who isn't familiar with it, some years back there was a documentary named Blackfish, which exposed the abuse at SeaWorld and had a dramatic effect on SeaWorld in reducing the abuse. Five years ago, Eric Good and Rebecca Chaiklin approached us saying they wanted to make the Blackfish of big cats in captivity to expose the abuse in captivity that's associated with the cub petting schemes and how these animals live in roadside zoos after they're too big to pet. We have turned down numerous people who came to us wanting to film because we did not think that they were going to do something meaningful. We thought they just wanted to do something sensational and we didn't want to be part of it. We did a little homework on Eric and Rebecca. Eric had a turtle sanctuary, so he seemed like someone who had a genuine interest in animal welfare. And Rebecca showed us the resume of one of the senior people that was working with them who had been involved in a great documentary called The Cove some years before that exposed the killing of the dolphins in Japan. So we, we trusted Eric and Rebecca when they told us that this documentary was going to be a meaningful piece of work that was going to be designed to expose the abuse that these poor cubs endure during the cub petting time and the miserable lives they lead in roadside zoos after that. We also believed them when they insisted that while Joe Exotic would be in it as one of the characters, he would not be the focus. We also believed Eric and Rebecca when they told us that while they felt they had to mention the disappearance of Carol's husband, Don, 23 years before, as part of the context and background on her, that it would be done in a respectful and truthful way. Not only did they lie about that, they never even gave us a chance to respond to many of the false claims that ended up in the documentary. Over the five years that they were making this series, they were here probably at least eight times, each time for one to three days of filming. We did everything we could to help them because they made us feel like we were their partners in trying to create this meaningful work to end the big cat abuse. In a way, this series is about con artists. People like Joe Exotic and Doc Antle who con people out of their money by convincing them that paying to pet tiger cubs somehow helps conservation. In my view, the biggest con artists of them all were Eric Good and Rebecca Chaiklin. I believe they are devoid of integrity, don't care about the animals, and clearly, clearly do not care about the truth. As far as I can tell, their only goal was to make something as inflammatory and salacious as possible so that Netflix would pay them millions for it. Some of you have had a chance to spend time with Carol in person. Anyone who spends an hour with Carol would come away knowing that there was no way she had any involvement in Don's disappearance and that the vicious rumors that were spread by his family are absolute nonsense stuff about meat grinders and, and septic tanks. This week, Kim Kardashian tweeted asking followers if they thought Carol killed her husband. I doubt if Kim will see this video, but if she were to come and spend an hour with Carol, I know she would have her answer and I know what it would be. And of course, we would welcome her visiting if she wanted to. I don't have a way to arrange for each of you to spend that hour with Carol. So I thought the next best thing that I could do would be to spend a minute or two just personally telling you what it is like to have been her husband and her partner in this mission to stop big cat abuse. In 15 years of living together, we have never had an argument. We have never even had a harsh word where the other one had to come back later and say, I'm sorry I said that. 
we make decisions together every week and we don't always agree. And what we do is we talk about it, we listen to each other's reasoning, and if we can't come to a decision that we both agree to, at some point in the discussion, after going back and forth, one of us just says, you know what? I can see that this is more important to you than it is to me, and let's do it your way. I, I honestly believe that I am the luckiest man in the world. I cannot imagine having a more considerate or caring spouse. What I'm not sure anyone can imagine is how difficult it is as a husband to have the woman you love so grossly mistreated by people who we trusted and betrayed us. For those of you who are interested, we built a website that goes into in great detail the events that occurred leading up to Don's disappearance. That website is bigcatrescue.org forward slash truth. Unfortunately, the injustice in the film does not stop there. We are getting nasty messages from people who believed it when Joe Exotic says that our cages are small. Those of you who have visited, of course, know that our smallest cage is the size of a small house, about 1,200 square feet, and the rest of them are much bigger. You know that the, quote, overgrown weeds that Joe refers to are the natural setting that our cats live in, which is, of course, the best setting for them. All of this is in contrast to Joe's zoo, where most of the animals live in tiny rectangular chain link boxes with pebble surfaces that are totally barren. As most of you know, people can only visit the sanctuary going on a guided tour of 20 people or less, where the guide tells them about the histories of the cats and then uses that to relate to the issues that they face in captivity and in the wild to educate people. The series only showed the one day of the year where we have our annual event called the Walkabout, where 600 people come from all over the country and some from all over the world to visit the sanctuary, to raise money, to donate to conservation projects in the wild. It's the one day where people get to wander around the sanctuary. But the series has people believing that every day we are just packed with crowds of people wandering around all day. Last year, that event generated $35,000 to donate to Project Saving Cats in the Wild. When the journalist Robert Moore did the Wondery podcast called Joe Exotic, at the end, he went through and listed all the lies that Joe had told them in the course of his experience with Joe. Tiger King doesn't even tell people that when Joe was claiming to be a country western singer, he was actually paying Danny Clinton and Vince Johnson to write and sing the songs, and Joe was just lip-syncing and lying about being a country western singer. All that being said, there is still a silver lining in all this. The series is reaching millions and millions of people who probably never had any idea the disreputable nature of the kind of people who operate these cub petting schemes for money. Hopefully, many of the viewers will realize that they should not patronize these places because it just supports this abuse. If you've taken the time to watch this video, I just want to sincerely thank you on behalf of myself, Carol, our staff, the volunteers, and particularly on behalf of the cats for the amazing expressions of support that you have sent to us during this time of dealing with this betrayal, which of course comes on top of the coronavirus, which is creating enormous financial stress. With your continued support, we will put a stop to this big cat abuse. Thank you.